is God. Amen. What a God we have. What a mighty God. We are your presence tonight. Lord, we thank you for life. We thank you for healing. We thank you for Lakoto Sakataba. Lebra Gashikorobo. Mazikata Sakataba. Lakoto Sokorobo. We give you all the glory and adoration. We exalt and magnify you. Have your way, O Lord, that your name will be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. Rabogo Sakata Sikadaba. Mazikata Sokorobo Shekeleba. God bless you. God bless you once again. Today we are gathered the second time today. Oh, Rakata Sakataba. God is doing something in this season. I'm excited. I don't know about you. Of what the Lord is doing. And what he has started to do. As you connect, please just share this on your wall. By the grace of God, we have something to do today. Mazuko Turubu. Rekata Sakataba. Lord, we thank you, we bless you. We exalt, we magnify you. Have your way, O Lord. Have your way, Father. That your name will be glorified. Blessed be the holy name. Mazika Taraba. I want us to pray. The Bible says the entrance of the word bringeth light and understanding to the simple. The word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Let the word that we are hearing and speaking now not be an enticing word of a man. But let it be the word of God that will bring glory to thy holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. What a mighty God. What a great God. If you connect, please God, just share it on your wall as the Lord gives you the grace. Ah, Oh, the word for us today is understanding you are right in Christ. As a child of God, we have rights. We have rights as a Christian, we have rights. You have to understand because your understanding in life is what makes you outstanding. If you don't understand your right, many times you will not get what you deserve. Even in a normal circle in life, in the family circle, in a business circle, if you don't know your right, you can be doing more than you expect to be done and you will not get enough because you don't know. Ignorance of the law is not an excuse. But I want you to know today, understanding your right in Christ Jesus, understanding your right, understanding the things, what is your right? The things that belongs to you, the things that are yours, the things that you can get because of your association with God, because of being a member of the commonwealth of Jesus Christ, of Israel, in the name of Jesus Christ. Rakata Sikotobo. Life can never give you anything unless you put a demand on it and take it. Today we are going to open your eyes by the grace of God. We begin to understand different dimensions of power and how to get into different realms and begin to take the things that are yours. Because it is time for us as Christians to begin to represent the God that we serve. Our God is a very big God. Today we talk about who God is in the morning. Who God is. How God is a great God. He is the creator. He is a loving father. He's a protector. He's a guider. He fights for us. He gives us everything. So if we know all that, why, why, why are we still where we are today? Why have we not been able to explore into the dimensions of power to begin to articulate and receive the things that are, are our benefit, the things that are our rights in the Christ Jesus? Why haven't we gotten those things? By the grace of God today, we are going to begin to open our eyes gradually and God will begin to unveil things to us and your lives will never be the same again. I'm telling you something is about to break in you in the name of Jesus Christ. You are about to enter into a different realm of oppression. In this season that people are confused, you will never be confused. In this season when people are running from place to place, they, are, they don't know where to go. They, they scatter for the everywhere. A lot of people are in the state of disarray. People are in the state of less affair. They are tired. But you will never be tired. In the name of Jesus. Because we shall be focused again. We have to understand. 
What are my rights? There are things that you just, for being a Christian, automatically supposed to happen to you. There are things that when you become a Christian, you just receive them. But if you don't know, that's why your understanding in life will make you outstanding. Today, you have to begin to know. What is knowledge? Original information. And when you, when you receive an information that is truth, and you begin to understand it, because the understanding is what makes the difference. If, it, if an information is passed down to you, and you cannot articulately process that information, to begin to unravel the mysteries inside the information, or the truth, then you will not be able to use the information. So the application of understanding, the uses of the information that you get through knowledge, is what we call wisdom. And it's only through wisdom that you can be able to enter into the supernatural realm to begin to pull the things that belongs to you, to begin to take what is your right, to begin to take the things that is yours. Masakataraba. Until you know. And let me tell you something. Life will not give you things that are yours until you demand for them. We got here in the book of Chronicles. The Bible says Jabez was a man. And he was honorable. But one day he was tired of being told how nice he is. He was tired of being told how smart and how wise he is. He was tired of being told how eloquent he can speak. He was tired of being told how well built he was. He was tired of being told where he's supposed to be. He decided to go to God. And that's what I want you to do today. Because we are going to pray. Many of us have forgotten our benefits. We have forgotten our rights. We are so beat down. We are so laid back and confused that we just allow the devil to eat our food, to eat our daily bread, eat our lunch. The devil just eats your dinner. And some people have been afflicted in the body and the devil just keep taking your lungs, taking your liver, your kidney, and you are running from everywhere because you don't know what belongs to you. If you let the devil, he will beat you down and kick you down. But today, we have to get up and begin to go back to the camp of the enemy and begin to take that which belongs to you. It is your right and you have to get it. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you Holy Spirit, thank you Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Rakata Sokotobo, Rekata Shikanama, Ribaka Sakata Sikotobo, Lekete Sekenema Shikanaba. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord. We worship you. Yes, Lord. The first thing that is your right is life. You have the right to live, it will not be given to you. It is your right. You are entitled. To life, I say you are entitled to life. The devil cannot take that away from you. It is yours. Yes, Lord. Life is your own. Get life today. Don't let the devil push you around anymore. It is time to begin to go back and take your life back. Take your job back. Take your business back. Take that destiny back. Take everything that belongs to you back. Let the devil not fool you. You cannot allow the devil to eat your lunch anymore. Say, I will not let the devil eat my lunch. Your lunch cannot be taken by the enemy. Not back, not today, not tomorrow, not forever. Let the devil stop now to begin to steal your health, to begin to steal that which belongs to you in the name of Jesus Christ. So you have right to life. Do you know that, oh caravan, let's, let's go forward. Life, how do we get life? The Bible says in the beginning of beginning, Genesis chapter 1, God created man in his image and likeness. Then in chapter 2, the Bible began to explain to us how God formed man. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. The Bible says, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life a man became a living soul so today you are, your life and your being was given to you by God it was not given to you by the government 
Your right to live is not given to you by the country where you are born. It is not given to you by your father or your mother. The right to live is a God-given right. And many of us as children of God, we know about the right to life. But we don't use it to the fullness. The devil did not give you life, so he cannot take your life. You don't hear me. I said the devil did not give you life. So he has no power to your life. The Bible says God formed man. God formed man from the dust. And breathed into man. There was the spirit of God. There was the breath of life. There was the blood of God that came into man. And man became a living thing. Don't let the devil eat your lunch anymore. Enough. Enough! John chapter 10 verse 10. The Bible said the thief cometh to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you should have life and have it in abundance. So life is yours. It is my right to live. I want you to say to yourself, you can type it. It is my right to live. You are not begging for it. You are not asking for it. It is yours. You got to take it back. You got to take your health back. You got to take your business back. Everything that belongs to you. The Bible says, God gave you life. He prayed into you. The life in him came into mortal man. And mortal man became the living soul. Yes, Lord, we worship you. The next thing here is fruitfulness. I just want to talk to you today. I want to, my, my spirit has been angry for a while now, since Friday, as the number of people that the devil and the sickness is ravaging. And people just act as if it is normal for people to die. Life belongs to you. And life belongs to God. The devil has no right over it. Genesis, in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, after God has created man, in verse 127, the Bible says, God said to man, be fruitful. So your goal is to be fruitful. So fruitfulness is a right. It is not something you beg for. It's not something you ask for. God did not give you fruitfulness the day you were born. You have been given fruitfulness before you were born. Before you were born, on earth, the fruitfulness in God has extended into your life because when God breathed into man, man came and became a living thing, man became something that came with fruit. So, fruit is in your loins. The devil cannot shortchange you to have children, the devil cannot shortchange you to prosper, the devil cannot shortchange you to increase, the devil cannot shortchange you to multiply because when you are fruitful, that is when you multiply. You cannot multiply when you are not fruitful. So the goal of life is to be fruitful. The first thing, when you hear about yourself, when you know about yourself, when you come into yourself, the first thing you begin to see is fruits. In everything that you do, you start to see fruit in them. But it takes a level of confidence and it takes a level of uh, dimensions of understanding. That's why I say you have to understand your right. Because if you don't understand, the devil can still take your fruit and you will be begging him for your fruit. It is your right to be fruitful. You have to be totally submissive under the government of God. Everything that is under God's power succeeds. Oh God, I don't, I don't, I don't want you to be confused about this. Fruitfulness is your right. The Bible says, God said, be fruitful. Be fruitful. Then when you are fruitful, it comes with all these other things. When you are fruitful, you multiply. When you multiply, you replenish. From replenishing, you subdue. From subduing, you begin to dominate. The end product of fruitfulness is to dominate. You don't become fruitful and stay fruitful. You become fruitful to multiply. Hallelujah. Am I missing somebody here today? I don't want you to be confused about this because we are going somewhere. You are right. 
as a child of God. You are right as a Christian. You are right as somebody that has Jesus Christ. When you have Christ, it comes with a privilege. I told you that we are the most exclusive people of earth Christians. You should be walking with your shoulders high. You should be looking tough in everything because all power in heaven and on earth has been given unto you. Let's begin to explore some of these rights more. Number three is freedom. Freedom cannot be given to you by any man. Although some people try to enslave people. For years, people were enslaved. Your right is to be free. God created man with liberty. The ability to be free was given to man from origin. Man was a dominant force. Man possessed the heavens and the earth. He controls everything that moves. Nothing moves except man says so. So you are a free being. You are a free spirited being. God created you that way. He gave it to you. These are things that no government gives. Government begin to adopt it. In fact, the whole world adopted the right of freedom. Liberty. Hallelujah. Is it also in the Constitution of America in the 14th Amendment? I think section one of the Constitution of the United States of America. There is right to liberty. Hallelujah. Rakoto Sakataba. This right. 14th Amendment, you have your right. Liberty is one of your rights. In the American, it's even in the Euro Constitution. In the United Nations Constitution, there is liberty. The right for people to be free. Isaiah chapter 60, 61. I want you to see something here. This is Jesus Christ speaking about himself or the Bible talking about Jesus is also in the book of Luke chapter 4. But I want us to get the account of Isaiah because this is the original source before Jesus quoted Isaiah in Luke when he went into the temple to begin to read the word of God. He read about himself. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1. The Bible says the spirit of the Lord is upon me so you can speak that to yourself because he had anointed me to preach the good tidings to the poor. He has Set me to heal the broken hearted, to proclaim what liberty to captives. So it is my right. God has given me that ability to proclaim liberty, to proclaim freedom, to speak freedom into people. It was not given to you by any man, not any country. They adopted it. That's why if you go to the Fourteenth Amendment, the Bible, the, the, the Constitution of America talked about. The right to liberty, the right to prosper, own properties. Hallelujah. It's your right. It's your right to live. Because you know, a lot of people that just saw it in the Constitution of America, they walk with their head and their, their, their shoulders high. You see people carrying God in the open place, they say it's their right. Have the right to bear arms. It's part of the right that we have in the constitution in America. The right to bear arms. But God, and you see people walk around everywhere with guns. They are proud because it's their right. And a lot of Christians are hiding their face. You are shaming yourself. You are putting a shame face because you don't know who you are. Today, I charge you to get back up and begin to enter into the supernatural. How do you do that? You get into God by communication through prayer. You get into the third heaven and begin to communicate and begin to look down on earth and begin to see the things that belongs to you that have been withheld or that have been held back or that have been kept because you didn't know. You go back and take them. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus said in John chapter 8 verse 30. The Bible says he preached to the Jews. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm excited here. He said he prayed to the Jews. And many believed on him. And Jesus said to those Jews that believed on him, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Jesus didn't say I will give you freedom because freedom has been given to you. But because you didn't know, until you know it, you can't be free. Even Jesus Say, I can't give you freedom because you have freedom already. But you have to know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. This is your right to be free from bondages, to be free from sickness, to be free from demonic oppression. It is your 
rat. You are not begging for it. You are not asking for it. So when you begin to understand, that's when you begin to operate in that realm. You don't, you don't operate in the realm. Many Christians are always begging for prayer, begging for healing. Begging. These are your rights, giving things. The things that you receive in the day you become a Christian. It is your right, but you have to know it. How do you know? This book of the law shall not depart from thy mouth. You study the word. You search the word. You begin to search deep things. The Bible says deep, collect unto deep. As you go deep, God will reveal deep things to you. As you go deep, many of you, after today, you when we pray, you begin to see in yourself in another direction, in the supernatural. Because God will begin to take you and elevate you. Because you have known, when you begin to un unravel some codes, there are some levels of places that you begin to enter. In this kingdom, it is a lot of things to see. But you have to know the access to that place. There are many access that we have. The name of Jesus, salvation gives you the access into, into the house. Jesus talked about two access. When he was talking to the, the, the rule of the Jews, Nicodemus, in John chapter 3, he said, well, if, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom. So the access to see is born again. The access to enter is born of the water and of the spirit. If, if you enter, is that enough? You have to begin to exercise dominion. There are realms. He never talked about that. But he told the disciples something in the book of Acts chapter 1. He said, and you shall receive power. Carry you in Jerusalem. Because there are realms that you cannot operate in now. These are men that have worked with him for three and a half years. These are men that started ministry with him. These are men that have seen him pray and seen him raise the dead. These are men that have seen all kinds of things. But there are things that they cannot operate in. Because they don't know it yet. Somebody will get excited today. Somebody will get excited today. And knowledge will begin to be that knowledge in your life. Your eyes of understanding will begin to open. You begin to understand the mysteries in the kingdom. There are dimensions and dimensions of power. Things that you, you don't know that you have to know. Because you have to know the truth. In the truth, there's freedom. Once you know the truth, what is truth? Original information. How it was made, it will be open to you. Once you desire it and ask for it, you will get it. Rakata Sokotobo. In the name of Jesus Christ. Freedom. Let's explore that freedom. Because freedom is deep. If we start to talk about freedom today, we are not living here. But I just want to explore it a little bit. If you look at the Bill of Rights in the United States Constitution, you know, I, 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 I did study about the Constitution of America when I was in school, and I have about three copies of the Constitution. And so I, I, I employ you if you are an American or you live in America, you have to have these things. Because the Constitution of America covers everybody inside the state, whether you are legal or illegal. That, that's, that's how broad it is. So if you are in the kingdom, whether you enter the kingdom directly or indirectly, but you are already inside the kingdom, there are rights that cover you. In the Bill of Rights, there are fundamental things that are written out in the Bill of Rights. And freedom is on the pinnacle of it. They are freedom to worship, freedom to assemble, freedom to speak, freedom of the press, freedom to sue the government. It's in your Bill of Rights. You don't like what the government is doing, you sue them. You go to court. If you win, then. If you don't win, it's okay. But you have the right. This is not a, a, a banana republic. I'm telling you that even heaven is even more. God said, come and let us reason together. Make your case. So that means God said, you can petition me. If I say something or if I do something and you don't like it, you can petition me. If you are right, then I'll give it to you. Many of us don't know that you can go and petition God. You can question God. I told you about Jabez. Jabez began to ask questions. And things changed. Jacob, after he had suffered for 22 years, he came back to Bethel the second time. He began to ask questions. And God said, what is your name? Before I answer you, what is your name? He said, my name is Jacob. Then he was, he was granted access 
to his benefit. The day he remembered his position, remembered who he was, his position as the prince of God, he was granted access to the commonwealth of Israel. And God said, because you have fought with man and God and have prevailed, your name shall be called Israel. Know your rights as a Christian. Freedom is at the peak of it. But freedom can never be given. Jesus, I can't give it to you. You have to know it until you know the truth. You can never be free. God told Moses, he said, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go, that they might serve me. Let my people go, that they might serve me. They were in slavery for 470 years. God said they will be there for 400 years. But 400 years have passed because they didn't know. They were still stuck there. God said, I'm not holding you anymore. You people don't know. The, the, the man that I, that, that I created for these people is not growing fast. Moses has already run away. Living in the backside of the desert. And God called him back. Say, now go to Pharaoh. Exodus chapter 8, verse 1. Tell him to let my people go that they might serve me. Freedom is their right to be free. And Moses went and it was a battle. At first, Moses, Moses did not agree to go. So he began to question God, question God, until God began to show him some things. And he, his spirit man began to grow. He started to enter into some dimensions of understanding. Because I want you to know that your understanding in life is what makes you outstanding. You can never be outstanding if you don't understand. And understanding comes from knowledge. And understanding will produce wisdom. Because it is what you know that you will do. Wisdom is the end product of understanding. And the end product of knowledge. Masi Kataraba. This is a kingdom that is run by knowledge. In the name of Jesus Christ, there are God giving rights that you have to know. I want us to move forward because we have to pray. Look at number four. We talked about number one is life. Your right to life, to live. You have a right to live. Nobody gave it to you. Not even your father or your mother that gave birth to you. It was given to you by God. God breathed into man. And man became a living soul. So when you came out from the womb and you say, Ah! There was a, a breath of life that you received from God. Not from your father. Not from your mother. Not from the doctors. Not from anybody. It is given to you. You have the life to read. The devil cannot steal life from you. Life is your, is, is your inheritance. It is part of your inheritance as a son of God, as a daughter of Zion. You have the right to live. You have the right to be fruitful. You, you don't beg to be fruitful. You don't appear somebody to be fruitful until you understand fruitfulness. You begin to know principles. Then you cannot be fruitful. But once you know them, it begins to work for you. You will not pay anybody to get it. You have to know it for yourself. That's why I'm telling you today. Begin to search the word of God. Deep, deep. Begin to understand things. God told Joshua in the book of Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. He said, this book of the law should not depart. Should not go away. Should not be far from you. Should not depart from not from your book, not from your carbon, not from your computer, not from your phone, not from your iPad, not from any of the gadget, not, not from your mouth. Should not depart from your mouth because you have to speak it as, as you speak. When the cloud is full, rain begins to fall. As you speak, the galaxies, the atmosphere, the air begin to respond. As you speak, the earth will begin to bring forth in the name of Jesus. So fruitfulness is your right. We talk about freedom. If nations and countries, even as wicked as they are, they know that their freedom that you have, they, are calling, it, they call it the fundamental. Fundamental. That is things that no government makes. Fundamental human rights. You have freedom to speak. You have freedom to assemble. You have freedom to worship. You have freedom to do anything. Those are your rights. It was not given to you by government. It was not given to you by your father. It was given by God. It is time to exercise. Number four is power. Authority. Luke chapter 10. You know, remember when God created man, God told Adam to name everything. Adam was God on earth. But man lost it. We are not going back to Adam. 
But I'm talking now. Fast forward to the dispensation of Christ, which we are still under grace. The Bible says Jesus came, Luke chapter 10, verse 19. He said, and you shall receive power. The power we are talking there now is not the ability to push things, to move something. It is part of it. We are talking about authority. Because authority is bigger than power. And talking about authority, you have been delegated. You have been given authority. Say, behold, I give it to you. It is yours. And you don't have to beg for it. You, it comes with the package. Once you become a child of God, as many that receive him, then he gave power, authority, to become the sons of God. So power was given to you once you come back as a child of God. You receive it. I'm very excited because I'm telling you these are realms that many Christians, in fact, some people will die without attending here because of knowledge. But when you know, that's why the Bible says, a man of knowledge increases in strength. You don't have to have muscles. It's good to build up, but you don't need muscles to fight. You need to know. Once you know more, you get more. Everything responds to you. So, God said, I give you power. Jesus said, Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Behold, I give you power to tread. When you are treading on things, that means those things are under your feet. That means they are not above you. You are above them. That means they don't have power over you. That means you have power. He said to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall have enemies hurt you. Oh, la katasaka. Even if I stop now, we have achieved something. You have power. You have power. And I think I might give you one or two more. And we move forward. It's a lot of things that, you know, when we study, we go deep. You have power. But Jesus said, Tide in Jerusalem until the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall receive power, authority, empowerment. You shall be satisfied. Some of you have gone to school. You have received your degree. Or you have you are, you are a master's degree. Or whatever. But in that field, for you to get to the potential, you need to be satisfied. You need to have your board license. You need to have some kind of certification. Jesus said, you have received Jesus Christ. You are already in the kingdom, but you can't do this level of things until you receive power, until you are satisfied. Then, you can be witness. You enter into another realm. You begin to operate in the supernatural realm, whereby the things that are natural, cannot work for you anymore. You are speaking from the supernatural authority. You begin to say things in the supernatural and they come to pass in the natural because you understand mysteries. I tell you about this kingdom. It's a kingdom of secrets. But the secret you know today is what you operate in. Many people operate in dimensions. Sometimes you dangle into something and it works and you can't do it again because you did not know. Maybe you walk into that room. You get into that place through praise, through worship, through your prayer and you find yourself in the Holy of Holies, something break. But when you get in there with knowledge, when God has been with you, it is intimacy that opens God to you. When you allow God to come into you, when God becomes the other with you, when God intimates with you, then the revelations of the heavens and the earth will begin to be easy. Moses was sitting down with God in one place, and he saw how God created the heaven and the earth. He saw the whole book of Genesis, Exodus, he saw the whole thing and began to write. He was not born there, but he entered into a different dimension by knowledge. He sat with God. He had a story. God played a video for him. He saw Abraham. He saw Adam. He saw all these men. Enoch. He began to write about them. God is going to take you there because your eyes and understanding is opening now. You shall receive power in the name of Jesus Christ. Power. Authority. Delegated power. That's what we call authority. When it has been delegated to you, you can use it now. You can use it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. What one of the things that also that we receive is signs and wonders. Let's go to the Bible. Mark chapter 16. Oh, la carabasa. We are going to stop there. We are going to pray. I want us to get to this prayer and pray hard. Oh, la carabashi caraba. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, rabagashi caraba. There are dimensions that we are going to pray tonight. So I want to get myself loose of everything. Mark chapter 16. 
Oh, ya katasi katabasi konobo. Rebaga shakatabasan tarababa. Mark chapter 16. Are we there? Look at verse 15. Jesus was talking to them. This is on the day of ascension. The Bible says Jesus said to them in verse 15, and he said to them, Go ye into the world and preach the gospel to every creature, and he and you who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. But I want you to see verse 17. Signs and wonders is part of your package. You don't pay for it. I see people, Christians, that are tongue speaking. People that are praying. When they pray, the Holy Ghost comes down. They pray, they get into the third heaven. But they begin to run after signs and wonders. Oh, come and see, come on. The Bible says these things follow you. They are your paparazzi. They accompany you. They go with you. The Bible says verse 17. And these signs shall follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will cast out devils. They will speak with new tongues. Speaking in tongues will be just you wake up and begin to speak in heavenly languages. Verse 18. They will take up a serpent. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt by any means of them. And the last thing is healing. I see a lot of Christians sick and they have been begging people to, to heal them. They have been begging, even begging God. The Bible says when you understand your right, healing is your own. You give healing. The Bible says they will lay their hand upon the sick and they shall recover. You remember when the woman came to Jesus and said, my daughter is sick. And Jesus looked at her and said, we don't take what belongs to the children and give to dogs. Healing is children's bread. It's the bread of the children. In the name of Jesus Christ, are you ready to exercise dominion in healing? Today, your eyes of understanding have opened. You will begin to operate in signs and wonders. Signs and wonders will begin to follow you. Rakata Sikotobo. The moment your eyes of understanding open, things will begin to un un unveil itself. Prosperity will be something that you get by knowledge. You don't get it by chance. You don't prosper by chance. Everything in this kingdom is conscious. To the layman by the street here yeah, is a mystery. But to us, it's given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Because you are in, you have to desire to go higher. Don't stay where you are. Begin to operate. That's why when I come, I take time. We study, we go deep, we hear from God, we package this food and bring it to you. I don't want to come and bamboozle with stories. I can come here and tell you a lot of stories and we pray and pray. You get some things because you are in the mix of the prayer. But when I allow you to understand what I know, you can be able to get into that place by yourself. In your room, you can get into the Holy of Holies. You can bypass everything and move and you'll be in the supernatural realm. Begin to speak in the heavenly language. You begin to converse with God. God will come and lie down with you. God will come and be with you. There is a level of relationship that you develop with God. It will be so intimate that God will be talking to you. God told Abraham, he said, I cannot do this wicked thing without letting my friend know. Abraham was a man that had discovered the secret of the supernatural. That God cannot even do something without letting him. Abraham was a man that God gossip with. Every time God wants to do something, hey Abraham, I'm going to go to uh, Capernaum. I'm going to Egypt. I'm going to Sodom and Gomorrah. God talks to him. There were bodies in that level. Have you developed that kind of relationship in the name of Jesus Christ? God told Moses, he said, I have made you a God over Pharaoh. Moses sits down with God and then discuss for 80 days, 88 days, and no food, no water. He was not hungry. You have to get to that level. You have to get to that level. At the time God was talking to Moses, he said, I will destroy these people and I will create a nation out of you. Moses opened his mouth, a mortal man that was made out of dust. But because his spiritual man has elevated himself to prayer, through relationship, he has come to the Holy of Holies. He understands the principle and the governances of the supernatural. The Bible says, he told God, he said, repent of your word. A man told God to repent. Today, you are right. Let me tell you, even in America here, that we have rights. If you don't know your right, you can still go to jail because you don't know it. Ignorance of the law is not an excuse that you don't know what the law says. 
does not mean that the Lord will just on his own work for you. This is saying that justice is blind. But when you know it, it it's not something that is blind again. That's why they say love is blind. Love, love is not blind. Love has eyes. But if you don't know about love, it's a blind thing. Are you ready to get into the supernatural? Are you ready to begin to possess your possession? Are you ready to begin to tear down? I want us to see what's in here. I'm telling you that you have to manifest. You have to manifest the gift of God. You have to manifest in this number, number, number five. Number six, manifestation of the gift. I, I won't have time to read First Corinthians chapter 12. The Bible says the gift, the gift, God began to give spiritual gift. I want you to go and read First Corinthians chapter 12 and read from verse 1 to 11 and see all the gifts that was given to men. But they were not just given to them because they, they were just walking around. There was a desire. There was a desire of those gifts. And people prayed. Some people fasted for it. And when God released it to you, it is yours. And you have to begin to operate in that place. You have to begin to operate to know what God has for you. What is package for you. What is your right. What is your benefit. What are the things that ought to be. They are gift of wisdom. They are gift of wisdom. Knowledge. Faith. There's gift of healing. Discernment of the spirit. Prophecy. is a gift. So sometimes when you see people prophesy, you say, ah, they are special members. They desire it. They went through some things to be able to enter where it is given to you. Are you ready to take your gift today? The Bible says the gift of God is not unto repentance. Your mind and your spirit have to be ready. Jesus said that you shall know the truth. The truth shall make you free. Are you ready today? I want you to begin to thank God. Begin to thank God. I want us to see one verse of the Bible here. Among the gifts that has been released to us. Hebrews chapter 2. And uh, from verse 3 to 8, but I want to focus on verse 3 because of our time. I'm just going to read verse 8. If you go home or write it down, you can read from verse 3 until verse 8. You understand where you are operating from. You are not operating from the realm of men, you are operating from the realms of angels and Elohim. God has made man. The Bible was quoted twice there. When they put the Bible twice in the Bible, that means that Bible verse is very, very deep. The Bible says, God has made man a little lower than Elohim. Hebrews chapter 2. Look at verse 8. That's what I want to read. Thank you, Jesus. What is verse 8? He said, you have put all things in subjection under his feet. All things. It is written like that in the Bible. This was a quotation. Paul was quoting the Bible. He said, you have put all things. You have made all things. You have brought all things under the feet of man. For in that, he put all in subjection under him. He left nothing that is not put under him. But now, we do not yet see all things put under him. God has put everything, but you are not seeing it until you begin to discover. You can't recover. You discover by knowledge. God, God has put everything. When I say everything, sickness and infirmity are under your feet. The devil is under your feet. Jesus said, Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpent and scorpion and all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall my enemies hurt you. Everything that you are looking, they are under your feet. You are deciding what comes up, what stays, what dies. You can stand and begin to decree as God. Begin to thank God wherever you are. La Bobo Shakataba. Rekata Sikana Mamama. Rekata Sokotobo. Rebaga Shikaraba Santaraba. We worship you, Holy Spirit. We give you all the glory and adoration. Have your way, O oh Lord. Have your way, Father. Have your way, O oh Lord. That your name will be glorified. Bless me the holy name, O oh Lord. Masekataraba. Rekata Sikotobo Sikanama. Lord, we thank you, we worship you. For you are I am that I am. Rock of ages, ancient of days. Omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscience, God. Jehovah Elohim, we worship you, Lord. For we understand today our rights in Christ Jesus. We understand the things that belong to us 
as children of God. Today, as we go into the realms of the spirit, allow us to begin to receive, to begin to receive power, to be able to take, to be able to control our destinies, to be able to control our lives. We ask for, let our destinies be transformed. In the name of Jesus Christ, in this life, you live by common sense. Hallelujah. But you run in life. You run for your destiny. You run for your life. You run for everything that you get because it's a, it's a race. You run by principles. There are principles that govern the earth, that govern the world. If you don't know it, you will live and live and live and nothing will happen for you. But if you want to fly local Asakataba, you don't fly by principles. You fly by instruction. It takes knowledge. Even in the physical realm, when you want to fly, nobody gets up and fly an airplane. It is almost impossible. Somebody can get up and drive a car. If you understand the principles, you can drive a car. You can run. But you cannot fly without instruction. Today, many of you are ready to fly. Are you still crawling? You want to walk? You gotta walk and run by principles. There are principles that guide everything, and you allow God to begin to unfold that into you, to open your supernatural eyes, to begin to see it. Then, if you are up to the place of general, you have gone so deep that you want to begin to fly like God. You can be here and be somewhere. You can be sleeping in your home and be seeing something that is happening ten thousand miles away from you. Your spirit man cannot be caged. Every human being have the ability to think. And when you think your mind can go to some places that your physical body cannot go, that is your spirit man. If you can fly to the heavens, you can go to heaven and come back down. You can go to heaven and come back down. But you do that through instruction. You will guide them. There's an angelic power. There's a supernatural realm. There are divine authorities that begin to guide you in different methodologies. How to operate in the supernatural. Today, whichever way you are desiring, God is giving it to you in the name of Jesus Christ. You just want to run. You say, please, I just want to run. I just want to run and get my husband. I just want to run and get my job. I just want to run and get my career. I just want to run and get my business going. Then begin to understand the principles of running. There are principles that are put in place, precept upon precept. The Bible says they are lines upon line. For the path of the just is like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. Ask God. As I'm calling this things, I want you to begin to pray. Because of time. I don't want to leave you in the prayer, but I'm going to give you key nuggets and things to pray for. You can write it down at your own time. You sit down and begin to, begin to unravel these things. The things we have seen today, they are so deep. They are so deep that it will take some time a month to get it all. Where do you want to be? Three months from now. With what is going on? Do you understand you can leave your body and come back to this body? Your body is just a house. Nobody run around with their house everywhere. The Bible says your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. You is a house where your spirit man lives. You can get out of this body. If the body is not well, you go and fix your body. You speak to this body. Any part of you that has been compromised. You see your liver, your skin, your lungs, your heart. Whatever the devil has done in your life. I said, let healing come now by the authority and the power in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive healing. It is your right to be healed. The Bible says it is a gift. The gift of healing. Let it come upon you. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want us to, I want us to fight the battle. The rest of the things that you will receive. You can go home and pray for that. I will just give you one place. First Peter chapter 5. I want us to be able to tear down every partition of walls. First Peter chapter 5. I want you to see verse 8. We are reading that and we pray and we are going to call it a day. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says be sober. It's a word. He has a command. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, Walks about like a roaring lion. When somebody is like, they call them wannabes. The devil is a wannabe. He wants to be a lion. He can't be a lion. He will never be a lion. The lion is Jesus Christ. The Bible says Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. So the devil went and took the nature of a lion. 
begin to walk around like a liar. The Bible says, walk around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. That is not your family, not your job, not your life, not your ministry, not your business, not your health. He can't devour you. You already know him. He, the Bible says, some people come like a wolf, like a sheep, but inside them is a wolf. The devil comes like a lion. He's not a lion. Jesus is a lion. You have lion nature in you. You can eat him up as a, as a meal. Today, I want you to stand in your authority as a son and begin to decree and declare that no power from the pit of hell, ancestral deity, familiar spirit, can be able to devour you, devour your life, devour your, devour your ministry, your business, devour your job. Because life is given to you, not by man, not by your father, not by the government. You have the life to live. The Bible says God looked at man and said, God breathed into man the breath of life. A man became a living soul. So the life that you live is not controlled by anybody. It's controlled by God. And you that has been given the life, you can destroy the life. Because he said, I set before you life and death. Choose life that you might live. You can be the one to destroy it. But the devil has no right. If the devil has talked back with your life in any form or way, I want you to stand now and begin to decree. And begin to decree in the name of Jesus Christ. That everything that has been done against your destiny, against your life, against your family, against your job, business, ministry, what your health, are you sick in the body? It is time to go back to the kingdom of darkness and begin to possess your health. Take everything that belongs to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. We worship you, Lord. We give you all the glory. Rabo gusa kana baba ba, rika tasa kata ba, limba na shokoro gusekele baba ba. Blessed be the Holy Name. I want you to keep praying. I want you to pray for yourself. I need, I need you to pray. I need you to pray because you are the one that can go and say, "Open this door." The devil will hear your voice. I can speak to you, and you get there. But if I leave, you don't know what to take. You know what you want. Tell God that as I go into the camp of the enemy. Everything that I've been stolen, that I've been derailed, that I've been hindered, that I've been held back by the enemy concerning me, let them release it now. Lord, we give you all the glory and adoration. We, we exalt your holy name. Thank you for doing it today. What a great God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I just want to pray for you. I want this prayer that I've just talked about. Some of these things, you are going to take time to study them. And really, I was trying to meet up with our time. But thank God that we got some things out. We didn't finish it. But this is enough. Understanding you are right in Christ Jesus. Understanding the things that belong to you in Jesus. Understanding the things that are yours in Jesus Christ. When you understand, you begin to get. You begin to receive. Today, let the God of all grace, who has called us unto his marvelous work, begin to strengthen you today. Let God begin to perfect your ways. Let God begin to heal you. Let God begin to make your ways to be perfect. Let him establish you in this land and begin to settle you. Receive your settlement. Every back pain that has not been given to you in the form of anything, receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want to pray for those of you that are giving their life to Christ for the first time. This is I'm saying if you, if you don't have Jesus, some of them will never be possible. But if you receive Christ, the Bible says to them that believe, I give you the power to become the sons of God. Then when you become a son, some of these things will begin to happen on their own naturally. Just say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I receive you with my heart and I confess you with my mouth. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Congratulations. You are a Christian. Just find somewhere a Bible believing church and fuse yourself in there and begin to serve. If you want to write us, we are open. Write us, write me a message and talk to us. I love you with all my heart. I want to just give us a rundown of our announcement. I'm coming back tomorrow, Monday to Friday, every evening, 7 p.m. Eastern time. We are here at your service. But if you have anything that you want to know, you want to understand, write us, send us a text, send us a message on the messenger and we will talk to you. Or call our phones. There are phone numbers there. And if God has blessed you, you want to be a blessing to this ministry, there are ways to sow. You can see at the end of the message. God bless you and have a wonderful week ahead of you. Because your life has changed. 
Don't ever see yourself in the same way again because the, the, the veil that covered your eyes have been opened. And you begin to understand some mysteries that are in this kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We thank you, Lord. We worship you for we know that you have done it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. I love you with all my heart above all. Jesus, love you the more. Have a wonderful week ahead of you. Amen.